And uh, this is, uh, I told the people, if they had something more important, that this would uh, would not be earth-shaking today, because uh, we don't have any bills yet. I guess that's the good news, isn't it? Uh, so, um, we got seven members? Yes, sir. Okay, we can come to order here. This is... This is the House Defense and Veterans Affairs Committee, uh, and uh, I'm John Yates, uh, State Representative Chairman. And so this, would, uh, today, after we adopt the rules, uh, we'll just kind of leave it open, and we got some new members, and certainly we'd like to officially meet them, and, uh, and anybody else can say, I usually, since it is Defense Committee, uh, Usually they will to tell their military background, uh, their family, or whatever. What do they want to say on that? I think it makes kind of an interesting thing. And, of course, if anybody's in a big hurry, they can leave before that since it's not really official business. Um, so uh, uh, has everybody read the rules? Has any, at some point, does somebody want to move for adoption, uh, move in second? And then uh, it's been moved. Uh, and seconded. Second. Uh, you get that. Uh, all in favor of the rules uh, being uh, as uh, printed, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Well, they are carried. Uh, is there any other official business we got to do? Uh, since there's no other official business, uh, and say if somebody's in a hurry to go to another committee meeting, of course, uh, they, they're welcome to go because it's, uh, uh, this is just, I think, something that's uh, interesting to let, uh, since we'll be working together for a few weeks to know what, uh, I'd like to hear from people say, why did you join this committee? Because I'll tell you this, and it seems strange because, um, of the committees up here, number, if you count the number of bills we get, then this wouldn't be the most com important committee up here. Now, to me, um, since I look after constituents, I look on that as more important than passing bills because there's a lot of people out there have trouble with government. The government's not user-friendly a lot of times, and I spend most of my time helping people through the problems created by government. I mean, uh, I'm not, I'm not overwhelmed with what government does for us. Sometimes they do against us about as much, and that's our job, I think, to keep that from happening, as much as we can. So I'd like to hear from uh, uh, all of you members, that w any of you that want to speak up, uh, tell, um, you know, why did you want to get a, And I'll say this: it's interesting that even though this is. You know, Ways and Means and Appropriation and all those committees, certainly um, you'd have to be more important. They do more things, and anything that touches the money is certainly important. And uh, so uh, this, uh, our committee is not one that has a lot of bills, but it's uh, for some strange reason uh, we have people uh, wanting to get on this committee. Uh, and... Uh, as I say, I base it, what is it, had a little song on it, there's just something about a soldier, I guess, is that it's uh, my whole family were, you know, didn't retire from the military, but they all served. And uh, during World War II, there was, uh, there was four of us uh, serving, and uh, three were in combat. The end of the war, two were prisoners of war, and one was uh, in a hospital, so everybody came back okay. So that's my story. And uh, I was, uh, uh, when I first got here, Tom Murphy, of course, our Democrats were running things in, and so he put me on some rather insignificant committees. And, and so I, I wrote a letter to the speaker and to the uh, head of appropriations, and I said, uh, I can serve the people, you know, based on my background. And, BBA from Georgia State, a major in accounting and a minor in income tax, and having worked million dollar budgets at Ford Motor Company, uh, I said I could save the people better in appropriation than I can on human relations and aging. <laughs> and I wasn't that old then. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> laughing at that, no. <laughs> uh, and so, so uh, 
Oddly enough, I never promised Tom Murphy I'd vote for any of his budgets and never did uh, because it was strongly Democrat oriented and I was I was uh, Republican and uh, but uh, I got along fine with the speaker because I think he's a very honorable gentleman and uh, and uh, but uh, I I did, was able to get on there and, and and get the funding for the Griffin Campus University of Georgia you get a, you can get a locally you can get a degree just like you can in Athens and so I've worked toward that and education did so much for me in the uh, I couldn't have been an army officer without a good high school education I don't think and uh, certainly I couldn't have been manager of a depot and couldn't have been a, a chairman of the committee probably up here if I didn't have the uh, Georgia State degree I mean I, I, I kind of like to believe that so that's uh, that's my story. Does anybody want to tell? Um, as I say, I'm very interested in uh, military and whatever. Yeah, I'll just start over there. The then they give you name and uh, and. Uh, Speak into the mic so people can hear you. Mr. Chairman, I am uh, Daryl Elam. I'm from Albany, Georgia. I asked to be on the committee because I'm a retired Marine. Uh, grew up over in South Alabama, but I came to Albany as a young captain in uh, 1980 and I uh, served two tours there. Uh, I, the, the Marine base there at Albany, that's my driving thoughts. And we've got some ideas right now about moving National Guard aboard that base, and that's very important to me. Uh, uh, if we can, I think it's about $2.3 million uh, for the initial facility to put out there, and I know that's a lot of money, but uh, I don't know if we would be considering that or that would be totally <laughs> appropriations, but uh, uh, if we are, I'd, I'd like to discuss it with you and whoever I, it may not even be an issue this year, but uh, that's the primary reason I asked to be on it, being, being a retired Marine and, and the Marine base is right in the heart of my district there, there in, uh, in, in Albany. I had a twin brother that was killed in Vietnam, and like you, we've, uh, er, every, as far back as uh, the uh, Civil War period, uh, we, we've had a, someone in our generation has served in the military. My dad was in the Navy, and so... Uh, I'm very, very much about defense in the, in the military. Thank you. I, uh, you haven't been in Albany too long because you would you'd be saying Albany, wouldn't you? I <laughs> <laughs> they tried to get me to say that, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I, I, I'm fine. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> it. It doesn't even. Uh, you know what? I, I bet you that uh, less than twenty percent of the people there uh, say Albany. <laughs> we say Albany. <laughs> Well, it's, it's nothing, nothing wrong with it either way. Yeah. It was just kind of funny. Yes, I, I, I don't know what I mentioned. I'm last World War II veteran from the uh, World War uh, II in the legislature. And uh, so that, that as, as I say, I, I think I forgot to say that. Um, yes, young lady, you want to say something? Um, only for the new people. Pardon? <laughs> What'd you say? Yes, sir, I will. Oh. I will introduce myself to the newcomers to this committee. Okay. Um, I am Representative Tanya Anderson, and I represent District 92, which covers portions of Rockdale and the Cab. There are no bases um, in either district, but in the metro Atlanta area, there are. I have served um, in the Air Force Reserve, and I retired after 22 years, so I'm here because um, my family, my dad served in the Army, Uncles and cousins served in the Air Force, um, and cousins in the Army as well. So, I have a very um, strong um, veteran and Department of Defense background. So that's why I'm here, and Thank I love you, serving with my chairman. And she'll give you a good hug. Or should I say that? I, don't know. <laughs> I tell people. I tell people that's. <laughs> I tell people that's the reason I serve up here. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, sir. I'm uh, Steve Tarvin, represent uh, District 2 in Northwest Georgia. I was on this committee for a couple of weeks last year. Got elected in a special election. Come from a military family. As uh, our our uh, personal hero in the in the house served in World War II. So did all, of course, all my uncles and dad. And and then the, my heir was uh, Vietnam. My cousins and brother-in-law killed in Vietnam. I, I was in the draft in the first first two years of the lottery, and my number was 346. Had I been drafted, I'd went like a man, handcuffed and hogtied. But uh, 
I come from a I come from a long list of uh, military people all the way back, like most of us did, Revolutionary War and Civil War. But the uh, reason I'm on this committee, I was a I was a subcontractor and printed uh, uniforms for uh, the military that we currently wear in theater. I spent a lot of time at Natick Army Soldier Center in uh, Natick, Massachusetts, and DLA, which was DSCP in Philadelphia at that time. And uh, I got acquainted with a lot of the uh, people and saltwater veterans. Uh, a lot of them seem to get deprived of, and I know in the state we can't do a lot about that, but I'm, uh, I'm, I was interested in this committee to try to help veterans that uh, feel like they've been left behind or left out. Thanks, sir. Well, uh, I uh, uh, tell people all the time, I mean, that I don't look on my job as legislator passing laws is the most important thing I do because there's so many people, particularly now that the federal government's falling down on the job on helping veterans, I think what we do to help veterans, and uh, anybody that has a veteran uh, or has an issue that you want me to introduce you to the people across the street, uh, you know, I I got my congressman has an office. Uh, Westmoreland has an office in uh, Noonan, and uh, and the lady over there uh, been there for years, and uh, people don't know who to call, so they call me sometimes on federal issues, and I refer it to her. They call her on state issues, and she refers to me, and then uh, we got a very good people across the street over here. That, our leader over there has been very sick, and he's kind of out of it right now. But one of these days when it gets, if he comes back and everything, I'd like to take the group over there. And uh, he's um, he's got pictures of every president he served, served under since George Washington, I think. And, <laughs> and he's got a paper, isn't it? Yeah, he's got a big uh, he's got a big iron <laughs> he's got a big iron statue of uh, Hitler over there uh, somewhere, and. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting place to be, and he's got two assistants over there, and Mike Roby is, used to be at Griffin office, and so I got to know him well down there, so I talked to him, and the other one is a retired uh, colonel, I believe, uh, the other uh, assistant commission, he's got two, and they're just wonderful people over there to help us on veterans things. And I say, we'll, uh, we'll have a meeting uh, one day over here where we'll bring in all of the National Guard uh, people and um, let you meet all the, the generals and and so forth and then we'll bring the veterans people over and and uh, and uh, say because there's a lot of ways that we can help each other on this thing and uh, so they'll be be ready to uh, and, and Mike Roby will uh, will call somebody if you want them to if let. The people would rather talk to an expert sometimes, you know, because they, they know all the details, can answer all the questions and so forth. And uh, so, um, yes, sir. And by uh, David Clark uh, from District 98. I have Buford, Sugar Hill, and uh, part of Suwannee. Uh, why I wanted to be on this committee, uh, I served six years in the Army, served in Afghanistan, um, Army Ranger, and uh, probably the great, I mean, it was definitely the, great, the greatest. Uh, experience of my life, enjoyed serving, um, and it goes way back in my family to the Revolutionary War, um, so uh, uh, we've served in every single war except, no, every single one, so, um, well, except the uh, first uh, Gulf War, so, anyway, so it, it's, it's been a huge honor just to carry that on, um, and then being on this committee, you know, um, so, I mean, it's, it's actually the number one committee that I could ask to be on, even though it's not the biggest committee, but it's um, I'm, I'm the most proud of, so I'm looking forward to being on it. And, uh, well, we're in very good stead here because, uh, you know, the speaker called me his hero, I guess, because of World War II, and he, I don't know whether y'all have seen it, but he's made me a special parking place down there. So. Well, we've seen it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, said if, I said, well, if I leave here after two years, it'd be 95 years old, uh, I'll change that it, Distinguished to extinguish them. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the reason I've lasted this long. I have a sense of humor and uh, don't take, I, I don't take the wrong things too seriously. Uh, but it's, uh, I tell you what makes this committee so great is just like the, the fellow gave the testimony there. I mean, is uh, we honor the military uh, due to our background and uh, either 
ourselves, our relatives, somewhere connected with the military, and we just want to uh, make the military to go well and, and do a job and help out. And I think tied in with veterans, uh, certainly you can help uh, one one way or another on this business. And uh, I thought that was kind of neat that the uh, National Guard asked me to swear in this soldier, and I, I didn't feel bad about getting him in trouble because it's, it's all voluntary, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that's real good. Yes, sir. My name's Heath Clark. Um, represent District 147, which is one of Robbins in Centerville, Houston County, and uh, also all of Robbins Air Force Base is in my district. I um, am the son of a um, Air. I'm an Air Force brat. Uh, my dad served 20 years in the United States Air Force. Uh, retired at Robbins. We stayed in the area. That's how we got to to Georgia. Um, so I'm a son of a veteran, uh, was very eager to try to get on this committee at Houston County. I believe uh, it has the highest per capita population of veterans. I think around 25 percent of uh, the population of Houston County is uh, 20 to 25 percent is, is, is veteran. And uh, so it's something very near and dear to my heart and my constituents. And uh, I'm, I'm, I currently even work at Robbins Air Force Base, and so uh, there's a unit of the Air Guard there with the J-STARS, and so it, it is very relevant to my constituency and uh, as a son of a veteran, something that I'm passionate about as well. Good. I have a, my wife has a lot of relatives that work there and re retired there at the base and everything. I had a great experience down there. I took uh, my uh, uh one of my grandsons down to uh, show him the base, and I really lucked out. I um, I got to meet uh, General Robert L. Scott, and he's the one who wrote the book about World War uh, Two. Uh, God is my co-pilot, and uh, one time he came to Griffin, and because um, uh, he was with Lanier High School when he was young. And uh, they had a deal that they want to sneak into a ball game that does something for you, whatever the club it was, you know. So they snuck in. Uh, uh, Lanier High was playing Griffin High. And the cops caught them uh, sneaking in, and they put them in jail and made them listen to all the shouts over there, not knowing what was happening. And as soon as the game was over, they turned them loose. And <laughs> I thought that was kind of neat. So the next time he came to Griffin, they let him fly one of the number th one of the th first three DC-3s, and he flew it over Griffin and whatever. And they gave him the key to the city and said, uh, "We want to forgive you for sneaking in last time. We're going to give you a key to the city. You get in on your own." So it was kind of a neat thing. He, he, and when I went down there, he uh, he talked to me and my grandson for an hour. I couldn't I couldn't cut him off. Uh, but he, he, it was a great experience because he had he really fought well, fought the war. He should have given him the key to the jail instead of. The city. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. And this gentleman is already on this uh, committee from long standing. And I uh, am. I am John Deffenbaugh. I'm from District One up in the very northwest corner, a border of Tennessee and Alabama. Um, I'm retired Navy Reserve, and. Um, Boy, the, this is the committee that I have had more positive use of for people. Uh, I've been able to help veterans in their situation getting into places like their uh, retirement facility, n nursing homes. Uh, I've been effective in making sure some uh, post offices have got their flags for the veterans. And I didn't know that before this, that uh, veterans get their burial flags from the post office, and uh, the my and you local. You got a good funeral director. They know how to get the thing. They the get them, yeah. But they get them from the post yeah. office, and the post office wasn't getting them, and uh, they were down to one. But the, the 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 funeral homes do do keep one or two ahead, but uh, I, I was able to get them twice now flags that they said they weren't able to get. So being able to help, like John was saying here, that 
if I don't get reelected doing anything else, I have served a significant purpose in my life in helping others. Thank you, sir. Uh, he is, uh, let's see, what is your job on the committee now? You're I'm just a committee member. <laughs> oh, who's it? We lost Bill. We, we lost both of our other. Bill H Hitchings is the vice chair. Yeah, okay. And then we lost uh, the man who went to the Senate, uh, the old farmer. Black. Oh, Black, Ellis. Yeah, yeah. Ellis Black. Ellis Black. Yeah. Um, well, I appreciate that. Uh, that's. I, I think it, uh, there's a certain amount of aura or, or about the thing or something of people looking on the committee and uh, because and then let me tell you some other things, some perks you can get out of this, is uh, uh, check with the people over there and find out that they, they cross the street, uh, and they give you these answers, or they'll call the people, and you get credit for it. You've taken care of the veterans, pro the family's problem without doing anything except making a phone call. That's right, and, and it uh, works. And they, that's what they're there for to help out mm -hmm. and everything. My, my, uh, Mike Roby is outstanding. Yeah. Wait, so think of any questions you want to think of now, and, and if you want to ask them and say, would they handle that for you? I mean, mm -hmm. I, if you if you got anything in mind that you want to find out for, for a veteran or something, somebody might have already uh, come to you on this. But I, I can tell you, almost anything you bring up, uh, between there and the, uh, with your congressman and across the street, uh, it's, uh, yeah, the, the, there's two veterans affairs. I found this out, state and federal. And Mike Roby has been able to help me. He's my first call on any veteran problem, issue, situation, wh whatever it is. He's my first call. And he one time said, oh, that's a federal level. You have to call so-and-so. But let me call first. Yeah, mm -hmm. that always helps best. And same same way if you're calling and tell somebody, uh, tell them this, this is State Representative John Yates, and that opens the door because oh, it does. they know your position and they know it's important. Uh, now, in his case, he can say this is Chairman Representative John Yates. <laughs> Uh, and 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 I I have used that as an example of service because, in and of myself, if I called these places, there would be no different response than if the veteran called. But if I say I'm representative, or if Mike Roby calls for me, we get an answer quickly. I well, mean, in hours. Yeah, I go hours. all out on it. I, I'll tell you how far I've gone on two cases. Uh, I went over and testified before the federal committee. The one case was this man had lost his hearing. An ammunition ship blew up in the harbor down in Italy. And since my, I was in charge uh, in field artillery in my division, uh, I was able to tell them what happens when a and, and I'll have to say this, during the entire war, even though I was around 48 howitzers from time to time, not always since I was in the airplane, but uh, I was there enough time to know what what explosions do to your ears, and I was never given earplugs in the, by the Army. And so I was able to testify uh, for that guy's case, and he got his pension. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've been... I've, uh, I was an expert witness, and I, I testified to one other thing. Um, like a lot of people, I went to the, the medical aid station two or three times for minor things, and never was it recorded. Mm -hmm. So you should have had a couple Purple Hearts. Well, <laughs> no, I, no that, didn't, that wasn't that, but I'm just saying that you could go back and, mm -hmm. and say, this happened to me in the Army, and he said, we don't see anything in the record. That's right. Because they didn't, you know, they They're just did. in the heat of battle, you don't do yeah, a lot of things. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably I'm, I'm preaching to the choir on this. I'm sure any of you that were in the military probably had the uh, same kind of experience. Let's see, where did we leave off? All right. Right there, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir.
My name is Chuck F. Strach, and I represent District 104. Um, I uh, am very, very honored to be on this committee and uh, get to serve under your leadership, Mr. Chairman. Um, as a uh, brief background, my, uh, I've had many family members serve in the, in the armed forces, uh, but my grandfathers on each side I'm very proud of. One was in uh, the U.S. Army Infantry, Big Red One, fought across uh, Europe fighting the Nazis in World War II. My um, grandfather on my mother's side was on the battleship Nevada, uh, was there at uh, D-Day and fought throughout the Pacific um, and uh, grew up hearing of their stories. I never served. My father uh, was in the Army and, and uh, reached the rank of captain, uh, but I have immense respect for uh, those that did. I have an interest in serving and assisting veterans uh, that are in need of assistance and uh, have already found many opportunities to do that in this position. Uh, it's an incredible honor to be on this committee. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's great to be back. My fifth year on the committee. Um, and, uh, 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 that's I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> and um, like so many of you, come from a military family. Uh, in fact, I was born uh, when my dad was in Vietnam. He deployed from Moody Air Force Base, and I was born uh, while he was there. And um, I served 12 years, enlisted at 18, uh, served in the Air National Guard while I put myself through college and law school, and then was a JAG officer for six years on active duty, served with 3rd Infantry Division down at Fort Stewart, deployed with them to Bosnia from 2000 to 2001, and then was a legal advisor to the three-star who commanded all ground forces in Afghanistan from 2001 to 2002 after 9-11 and then uh, did the same job during the invasion of Iraq uh, in 2003. Um, didn't see my wife for the first two years of our marriage, and so she kindly suggested I find a new line of work, and so that's why I got out, and it's great to still be involved and serve on this committee. Yeah, and still be married. You know, at any time, any time in any job, sometime from time to time, you run across some important people. On this job, I I really had lucked out. I guess I had lunch with General Norman Schwarzkopf up here, uh, and the present um, chief of staff of the Army. I had lunch. I had dinner one night with he and his wife, and uh, and uh, it's just just amazing. I'm mean, some of the people you run across. I. Uh, met General Petraeus and had a little fun out of him because I, I knew that he had been ch in charge of 101st Airborne at one time. And I said, well, uh, General, I hate to tell you this, but, you know, Airborne's kind of cocky because they, anybody can jump out of a perfectly good airplane and make it. There's it got to be doing something special. And <laughs> and uh, I never, uh, I kept wearing my parachute. I never did jump out for any reason. But uh, uh, I said, General, I hate to tell you this, but my 35th Infantry Division came to the rescue of your division one time. He wasn't in charge of it, of course. And he said, well, Representative, it's hard for me to believe we ever needed any rescuing. But uh, I said, well, when we got into Bastogne, you didn't have any ammunition left. <laughs> it wasn't him. It was General McAuliffe, of course. You remember, he's the general that the, the Germans asked him to surrender, and he said, nuts. And the, the German uh, Ask the interpreters, what does that mean? It means he's not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's. Uh, here, sir. it's somebody else got a question? Good. Mr. Chairman, when were you first elected to the General Assembly? Uh, it was in 1980, and I started serving in 81. Uh, I'll tell you how I happened to. This happened to me. I had 35 years of Ford Motor Company and retired a little early. I was manager of a depot in Los Angeles. Came well, back. Now, 35 years of Ford Motor Company, <laughs> and, and 34 years here. Uh, and now, and now it was uh, 20, 27 years here. Oh, yeah, I haven't had a life. I, I really haven't had a life. You're up in your 90s, aren't you? Um, I'm 93. <laughs> uh, Y'all come and look in my office in room 217, and I'll show you my museum there. But it's got a beautiful picture of a beautiful lake that I have never had time to go fishing in. I'll tell you uh, three reasons I ran for office, and you you can think about them not. I went all across the country with Ford, and I I met in I was a I was a Democrat the first uh, uh, twenty years I believe it was everybody in the South was practically, and then I um, 
went all across the country and met in Republican parties. And I came back to Griffin, and I, I had three reasons. I wrote my re representative three letters, and he didn't answer any of them, so I ran against him and beat him. <laughs> and I, did, I told the people they deserved better than that, and I didn't know that they was going to invent the Internet. You don't even have to buy a postage stamp to write to me, you know. So I spent a lot of time with a very competent legislative assistant answering all the questions for the people and whatever. And then the second reason, uh, I, wa I wanted a two-part system in Griffin because it works better. And the third reason, I want to prove to them that honest and politician could go together. And I've done that. I tell people I haven't done anything up here that I'd be ashamed to tell my mama if she was alive and anybody could please my mama is straight. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I had a customer at uh, Griffin United Cotton Goods, best manufacturer in Griffin, Georgia. Had a, they, they make them a textile business. My, my brother, who's a gradu graduate of Georgia, uh, Georgia Tech, uh, was, when he retired, he had had about 40 years with uh, Dundee, he, and he retired. Yeah, he retired it. Yeah, he retired his. Uh, we love you. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> he retired his. Uh, I think as vice president, general manager. I, I think we need to close this yeah, off. Well, we. Can, I told you. I told you you can leave any time you wanted well, to. Well, they are. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, I'll stay here as long as anybody wants to. But I, 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 I didn't get around. To, I didn't get around to asking the, anybody in the audience who want to ask a question. But anyway, uh, the other, the other next meetings after this will be business. <laughs> we had another customer there, of course, at McDonald's. Uh, John, yeah. You, you're right there. At, you run right up. So you, are you, have you got Henry Camp part of Henry? I got, uh, I got, uh, uh, Henry, I got Hampton. Mr. Chairman, can you just? Yeah, can we just officially say? We yeah, well, yes. Uh, you move for. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. Second. Second. You second? Yeah. All in favor, say aye. 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 We don't have now you stay as.